boardwalk games. You know the ones. You get yelled at from 50 feet away by a game operator, you drop a couple of bucks on an activity where the odds are definitely stacked against you, and in the off chance you do win, you get a Rastafarian banana plush worth 75 cents. They're a classic American staple. But did you know there was a time where they were considered illegal? And that it took the game of bingo to save them. To explore this story, we need to go back to the turn of the 20th century, as the United States began to wage a war against gambling. When states began to go after games of chance, they were more often than not going after activities like horse races or sports betting. Even beyond that, they were more concerned with the back alley gambling dens than they were with the ring toss games on the boardwalk. That said, in the eyes of the law, they were still considered gambling. They were games of chance that required the player to pay into them and usually depended primarily on luck rather than skill. Now, if states and cities were outlawing gambling, and these games were often seen as gambling, why weren't they just shut down and done away with? The short answer is that sometimes they were, and then they'd come back, and then they'd be shut down again. In most cases, these games were technically illegal the entire time. However, just because something's illegal doesn't mean the laws against it are always going to be enforced. It was common for local law enforcement to accept bribes to look the other way. And many times when they weren't bribed, they looked the other way anyway. Again, in the larger picture, boardwalk games weren't that important. People enjoyed them. Nobody was getting hurt. Sure, players were getting fleeced, but it was in the name of entertainment. In some instances, the lack of enforcement was just pure ignorance. In 1907, when New York formally outlawed gambling, word of the decision hadn't made its way up to Washington Heights in time. So the first weekend the laws were in effect, the carnival games at the Fort George Amusement Park went on without interruption. It was later reported that an estimated 100,000 fairgoers that weekend unknowingly broke the law. The police captain later admitted he was unaware of the ruling. The fairgoers? Well, I'm sure some of them knew, but did they really care? Probably not. However, when it came to the early 20th century religious reformers, they did care. Influence by religious groups had already resulted in local laws at Coney Island that banned everything from music to running the merry-go-round on Sundays. In their eyes, these boardwalk games were just as much a gambling problem as betting at the horse track. So they made sure they'd get attention, just like all the other forms of gambling. When that happened, the authorities would step in and start to shut them down. And it usually happened in waves. Between 1907 and 1909, police at Coney Island cracked down on the games of chance. And between 1930 and 1934, the same happened at Long Beach. New Jersey saw crackdowns in 1924, 1934, 1936, and 1942. Game operators would be arrested and then the games shut down. Sometimes they'd fight back in court and try to argue that their games were legal, and in the meantime, they'd get to run them a little bit longer. By the time September rolled around, the summer vacations would come to a close, and as a result, the games would shudder for the winter season. The very next spring, the feud would either pick up right where it left off, or sometimes the police would go back to looking the other way. This was the pattern for decades. Then in 1952 in New Jersey, bingo happened. Of course, bingo didn't just happen. The game itself is hundreds of years old and had made its way to the US decades prior, but the game had grown in popularity during World War II and was experiencing a revival after the war. At the time, it was mostly played at boardwalks and found an unexpected audience with older patrons. See, the thrill rides of boardwalks were often too much for older people, physically speaking. Even a lot of the games were based on some kind of hand-eye coordination or a physical task. Bingo, however, bingo was easy. You just sat there with a card and marked off a bunch of numbers. You could just sit, relax, have some fun, and maybe win a couple of bucks in the process. The problem was that bingo was, without a shadow of a doubt, gambling. It was one of the few examples of a game on the boardwalk that was 100% chance-based. There was absolutely no skill involved. So unlike some of the other games in which owners tried to argue that they were at least a little bit skill-based, Bingo didn't stand a chance. As a result, when the next crackdown happened in the early 1950s, Bingo got shut down. Old people didn't like that. It resulted in a public outcry in support of bringing back the game. 
So in 1952, the New Jersey legislature finally caved and introduced three measures that would legalize not only bingo, but raffles as well. The first two measures allowed local municipalities to vote on legalizing the two games of chance, and the third formed a nine-person commission called the Legalized Games of Chance Control Commission, or the LGCCC. Of course, municipalities all across the state voted to legalize bingo, and the elderly of New Jersey rejoiced. Years later, boardwalk games once again proved too popular and too detrimental to society and were once again cracked down on. This time, however, New Jersey aimed to settle the matter for good, and in 1956, the state Supreme Court ruled that they were illegal. Never mind the fact that they had been illegal for the last half century, which is why they were getting shut down every five to ten years, this time they were super illegal. Religious groups that year pushed for the ruling, campaigning on fear. Some went as far as arguing that if boardwalk games were allowed to continue, New Jersey would become an eastern Las Vegas broken clocks, right? While those groups were obviously pleased with the ruling, the larger majority of citizens in New Jersey were not. Regardless of the on-again, off-again legal troubles they faced, these games were seen as a harmless and fun staple of boardwalks and amusement parks. Between that and the relatively recent bingo victory, people were more outspoken in favor of the games than ever before. It led to two years of public debate and demand for legalizing the pastime. That, in turn, forced the New Jersey legislature to consider doing to the boardwalk games what they had just done with bingo. This time around, the fear-mongering over what might happen wasn't quite as effective. The state had seen over the previous seven years that a legalized and regulated form of gambling didn't actually destroy society. Furthermore, they found that by taxing the bingo games, they could collect over $78.5 million, which today would be worth around $706 million. So in 1959, using their experience with bingo as a template, a bill was introduced to the legislature. It would add a referendum vote to that November's election that would allow local municipalities to vote on whether or not to legalize the boardwalk and carnival games of chance. It would also allow for the creation of an amusement games control commissioner, who, like the LGCCC, would oversee which games were and weren't allowed and where they could operate. November rolled around, and just like with Bingo, the people got what they wanted. All in all, 503 out of 568 municipalities in New Jersey voted to legalize the games, including every municipality along the coast. With that election, New Jersey would become the first state in America to legalize amusement games. And as is often the case in instances like this, the legalization in New Jersey was just the beginning. That very same year, their neighbor, Pennsylvania, introduced their own bill in order to form their own commission on games of chance. They even borrowed the name and went with the LGCCC. Over the following couple of decades, other states would start to legalize the games. It often followed the same pattern. The states would try to enforce the anti-gambling measures against the games. They'd face public backlash by residents who not only enjoyed them, but could point to other states to prove that society didn't collapse and then the state would yield and finally legalize them. As it turned out, outlawing something that the public largely didn't see as wrong just to appease a small vocal religious minority didn't magically make it disappear. Instead, it bred corruption, put people who really shouldn't have been jailed behind bars, and created an environment where it still existed but was subject to no oversight or regulation, which only stood to put people at risk. It was a lesson that America had already learned the hard way decades earlier, and it was a lesson that America would apparently have to learn again, and again, and again. Considering the popularity of these games, it seems likely that one way or another they'd have found a path to legalization. It just so happened that the path they did go down was kicked off with a game of bingo. Thank you for watching. I know it goes without saying, but if you like the video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit that bell icon. I don't say that just to fit in with all the other YouTubers, it's because YouTube likes to change the way things work all the time, and that bell icon really is the best way to be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.